Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again with another episode of the Spurs career mode. We're into episode number 15 and our bid for Nanny has been accepted. We offered £10 million to Manchester United and they've accepted the bid. He wants hundred grand a week, which to be fair, I'm pretty uh, pretty okay with offering him considering uh, Aaron Lennon will hopefully be going out to, uh, to Newcastle. I'm going to offer him a three-year contract, 5% bonus for goals and a crucial squad role. And as you can see... Newcastle have accepted the counter offer of five and a half million pounds for Aaron Lennon, so fingers crossed that deal can get pushed through before deadline day. And of course, you can see, as you can see, the uh, the first game of the episode is actually in the FA Cup. It's our first involvement in the FA Cup this year. We've got Berry away, and uh, my word, was it absolutely pissing it down that day? Uh, it was so hard to play in the rain, especially against a uh, a team that isn't the best. They uh, they put so many men behind the ball and trying to pick apart a team where when uh, players just aren't you know uh, making their, their first touches were awful and the passes are going awry because of the wet and Berry had a couple of great chances as you can see Miller putting that one just wide he really should have done better and we went in at half time at nil nil and uh, Berry were giving as good as they got actually in the first half but in the second half we kind of stepped it up a gear and uh, were trying to make sure that we could progress through to the next round without having to go to a replay because that would really mess up fitness etc because of uh, all the extra games we're going to have to play with the Europa League etc at the minute so uh, we're hoping to be able to put ourselves ahead and Guilfi Sixton's going to play in Andros Townsend's going to step inside the defenders stand the ball up towards Towards the, uh, the penalty spot, Jermaine Defoe is going to get a great header on it and it does go in off the bar. Really accurate header to get that in between goalkeeper and post and uh, to get it into the back of the net. So we, do, we do take a 1-0 lead and then Defoe is involved again, this time being the uh, the provider for Andros Townsend to slot away. Really, really nice lob through ball. Just kind of guided it, lofted it with the inside of his foot. Townsend brought it down really, really well indeed on the chest and then in front of him. Great first touch to uh, to control the ball, make sure it doesn't bounce away from him and another tidy finish to make sure that we do progress through to the fourth round of the FA Cup, which is great. We, uh, of course, got knocked out in the Capital One Cup against Burnley, so it would be nice to reach the final of this competition because, of course... Um, you know, the board wants some domestic success. But Aaron Lennon has gone, as you saw there. So we can confirm the bid and the uh, the deal for Nani to come in. So Nani is coming from Manchester United for £10 million. And he is going to be involved straight away. We shoved him into the first team for the home game against Crystal Palace. Now, of course, Palace were the team that we played on the opening day. And we were able to run out 3-1 winners. Pick ourselves up a tidy victory. And then we're actually going to go 1-0 up quite early on inside the first 20 minutes. Eriksen stands the ball up gorgeously for uh, Roberto Sorado to put a thumping volley behind it and uh, that gives us an early lead you see just picks him out cuts the pass back takes out four defenders with one pass really really spectacular from Christian Eriksen and uh, we're actually going to make it 2-0 here Nani involved in the build up into Walker into Soldado gets the turn away from the defender and he's a world class finish great power great accuracy great determination to smash that across the goalkeeper into the back of the net and he wasn't done there we're actually going to win a penalty here now I can't quite decide whether it was for handball or for the elbow to the face. You'll be able to see from the replay, I presume it's given for handball. I've never seen uh, FIFA give a decision for uh, for roughness, etc., with an elbow to the face. But as you can see, does elbow Roberto Soldado clean across the nose, and uh, Soldado goes down like a lump of poo. But um, we're actually going to pick up a penalty. Soldado's got the chance to, uh, to pick up a hat-trick. His first for the club, if you can pop this penalty away. And we're going to have a look. He's going to make his run up. Keeper goes the right way. Can't get there. And Roberto Soldado has a first half hat trick. Absolutely delighted for him, to be completely honest. He's been a wonder goal. A wonder goal? A wonder player. Scoring loads of goals for us in his debut season in English football. And they were actually going to bring one back through uh, through Karen Jerome late on in the second half. But it wasn't to, uh, to be anything more than the consolation. And Roberto Soldado's... Robert, what? What even was that? Roberto Soldado's hat trick is enough to see us get another three points on the board in the Premier League and as you can see we've received a bid from Real Madrid for Moussa Dembele now I mentioned in one of the previous episodes that I wanted to maybe drop him from the first team but if we could get him to go out with a decent uh, fee raised from him especially considering it's Real Madrid they offered nine he's worth ten put in the counter offer for twelve and a half because you know Real Madrid have money so uh, hopefully they'll accept that and then we can look to bring in Freddy Guarín because he's the, the one midfielder that I really do want to get but as you can see we've had a uh, international contract offer from the Czech Republic now I did contemplate this for a while but I did end up, end up rejecting it just because I couldn't really justify uh, you know selecting a team that weren't that good you know I mean obviously you've got standout players like Petr Cech but um, 
it's not it's not really the sort of side that I would like to take to World Cup if I'm going to uh, to be involved in next year's Rio 2014 World Cup. But as you can see, we're sat seventh in the league, heading heading into this final game of the episode away at Swansea, which is always always a tough game. They gave us a real run for our money in the earlier game in the season and uh, played very, very well up against this indeed. We came close there in the first half. First half was a bit of a non-event, actually. There was a lot of possession of football, a lot in the midfield, as you may expect, playing Swansea. And uh, unfortunately, that was the only real uh, chance of note, and we weren't able to take the lead. But they were going to come extremely close there. Mitsu really should be finishing that with, from six yards out with a header. It's just extremely disappointing. But Dembele, having been booked, and uh, rumours of him leaving the club goes close and unfortunately the rebound doesn't quite fall to the man running in from the edge of the box and we aren't able to capitalise on that but we're going to get another chance Townsend again steps inside the defender stands the ball up for Defoe this time he goes with an overhead kick but there's two defenders throwing themselves in front of it and unfortunately we aren't able to get ourselves in front and it was going to prove costly Angle Rangle is going to push down this right hand side cut the ball inside to John Joe Shelby he's going to go on a nice mazy run past a couple of defenders play the ball into Michu he's going to try and find that bottom corner good save from Brad Friedel, uh, Lamar's going to cut inside, it's just all going on in the box right now and finally Kanyas is going to be the man to pop the ball into the open net because Friedel had made a good second save but couldn't quite get himself back onto his feet to protect the goal and we did go 1-0 down but talking about protecting your goal, Swansea did not do that, lacks in possession at the back, really wasteful there, Andrews Townsend has the pace to get away from the on-rushing defenders and we're back on level terms in the 80th minute which is superb, I thought right let's push on, let's try and get ourselves three points again but actually it was going to be Swansea that were going to have the final chance of the game, Mitsu breaking free beyond the last man and uh, really fortunate that it was on his right foot not his left scuffs the effort pulls it wide of that far post and we do take a point which is better than a defeat because Swansea were very very good in that game and uh, they're hard to play against on career mode especially on the higher difficulty settings so as you can see we are still sat seventh in the league although we're only four points away from Newcastle in fifth in that Europa League spot and only six points or eight points rather as maths fails me we're only eight points away from the Champions League positions so uh, it's definitely still all to play for as we head into the last episode of uh, the January transfer window which will be the next episode and there is a lot going on in that episode let me tell you so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already there will be a link to do so in the description and of course an annotation on screen over the subscribe button feel free to leave the video a like as well if you could be so kind that would be absolutely superb and if you missed the previous video there's an annotation on screen over the play button to take you to that particular video so thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.